in the Bible. A mother called Jochebed. Who? You might ask. Jochebed? Who's Jochebed? Well, after Joseph brought his family from Canaan to Egypt during the Great Famine, Pharaoh let them live in Goshen, which is in the rich, fertile region of the Delta Nile. Some 400 years later, there was an unprecedented increase in the seed of Abraham, Israelites. And the government of Egypt feared and trembled that they could be outnumbered and be taken over as an Egyptian nation. The reigning pharaoh, however, was determined to stamp out the people from these lands, the Israelites, who were outnumbering or nearly outnumbering his people. So he conceived a cruel plan of destroying all the male children. Does that sound familiar? Remember King Herod wanted to get rid of Jesus, the king of the Jews? and made an edict to kill all male children as they were born. Pharaoh was doing this as well. He issued a decree to the Hebrew midwives, Shifra and Pua. They should destroy all the newborn sons of the Hebrews, but spare the infant daughters to live. However, the midwives feared God and disobeyed the Pharaoh, the orders of the king of Egypt, and they let the boys live. When the king noticed that the midwives did not obey him, he queried them and they said, well, Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women. They are so healthy that they had their babies before a midwife arrived. Well, that's divine, isn't it? And that's in Exodus 1, 18, 19. Divine intervention. Now there was a Levite woman called Jochebed. Her name meant glory of Jehovah. Glory of God. She was a woman of God. She was a daughter to Kohath. And married to her nephew Amran. From within her own tribe. Making her not only his aunt, but now also his wife. Things were different then, much different. A lot different than when they are today. She, listen, she was the mother, Jochebed was the mother of Moses, a Hebrew woman living in slavery in Egypt before the Exodus. It's strange though. Her name is never mentioned in this story. And you have to study the genealogy of Moses, or Moshe, as they call him, in Numbers 26, 59, to actually find out the name of the mother of Mo or Moses or Moshe. And her name was Jacobed. And yet she's an incredible, important hero of the Bible. She was a woman of great faith, and determination, even by giving up and letting go. Have you ever had to give up and let go of something or someone that is very precious to you? After bearing a baby in your womb for months, giving birth, held the baby, nursed and stayed up all night trying to ease his crying, and after three months, you give him up. Abortion is never easy. Mothers begin saying goodbye to their children from the moment they are born because someday they will leave her. Jacobed has three children. Miriam, a daughter, and she was a gifted poet and musician. Aaron, who became the first high priest of Israel and founder of the Aaronic priesthood and also the Aaronic blessing. Moses, one of the greatest national leaders and lawmaker the world has ever known. 
When Moses was born, Acts seven twenty said he was a unusual child. Hebrews eleven twenty three said he was a beautiful child. And Exodus two two said a godly child. Jochebed must have had intense horror. She waited that third child to be born, Moses. It's a boy. And he will be thrown into the crocodile-infected Nile River. Behold, guess what? She gave birth to a baby boy. Now what would his fate be? Can you imagine what was going through the mother's mind? She got away with Aaron, a son. But now Pharaoh knew that the midwives were not doing what they were supposed to do. Now she had a baby boy. Was she crying when she let the child go? Emotionally, how disturbed was she? All her choices now were difficult and risky. Imagine the emotions, the feelings Jochebed had when she placed the baby boy down into the Nile River in the water and backed away. But you know, God was setting the stage here. God was in control because Jochebed was a godly woman. When she was crying, she let the child go. Even though Miriam was watching from a distance and placed on the shore, Jochebed had the courage to let her son go and trust in God. Like I said, God was set in the stage for something different. It was not uncommon for Pharaoh or other Egyptians to bathe ceremonially in the sacred Nile River. Since they believed that the Nile possessed the ability to impart fruitfulness and prolong life. Just at that time, the daughter of Pharaoh, the princess, came down to bathe in the river and her maidens were walking along the Nile Riverside. It was not an accident, but divine intervention. They found Jochebed's child floating in a reed basket with a tarred bottom for protection and who was amazingly cute and unique. She opened it up herself, the princess, and the boy Moses cried and she had compassion on him. Miriam asked, which was his sister, she rushed up and says, do you need a Hebrew wet nurse? Because he was wrapped in a Hebrew blanket and both the princess and her maiden servants knew that the baby was Hebrew. So she ran and got her mom, Jochebed, which was the baby's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said to Jochebed, take this baby and nurse for me. And listen, I will even pay you to do it. So she took the baby and nursed him. Preschool education is very important for a child. You know that. And when the child got older, she took the child back to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. She named him Moses, which meant I drew him from the water. And she raised him in Egyptian education and culture. He had the best education and refined education a man or a boy could ever get. But it came a day when he grew older and Jochebed would have to let him go once again. But he must have been taught about the God of Abraham, Isaac, Israel, the creation story, he must have been taught about the flood in Jacob's wonderful vision and miracle. He must have been taught about how God parted the Red Sea. He must have also been taught and experienced the power of the living God, 
who spoke and acted and loved and cared for his people, without doubt, little Moses must have known about the fetishes of the gods of Egypt. And they were simply myths and shadows. You know, Vladimir Lenin, he's Russian, once said, Give me four years to teach the children, and the seed I have sown will never be uprooted. Jacobed, Moses' mother, had him for more than four years. And he was instilled with the Hebrew knowledge and Hebrew nation and the history. I guess this second time was harder for Jacobed than the first. There had now been some more bonding between the mother and the son. Moses wouldn't have been the man he was without his mum, Jacobed a praying mum, and a woman of faith. When you let go and trust God, God is glorified and he will work it out for the ultimate good. You know that. Jochebed showed great trust in God's faithfulness. Amran and Jochebed couldn't have picked a worse time for them, for his wife to be pregnant. And although risking their lives as well as never choosing the abortion option, she had the overpowering love to preserve the lives of her children. And let me tell you, what a contrast with today when we kill over one million babies a year. I'll say that again. We kill over one million babies a year through abortion. When God is for you, who will be against you? Could you, like Jochebed, know when to let go and hand it over to God? That's always a difficult thing to do and know, isn't it? When you've done everything, tried everything, pulling your hair out and can't do it. There's only one place you can go. And that is hand it over all to God. But listen, to be able to walk away from the altar and leave it with him and trust him that he can do it because you certainly can't because you wouldn't be there giving it to him in the first place because you've tried everything and it hasn't worked. Why did she do that? You might ask. She did it because the mothers will do almost anything to make sure their children are safe. How powerful the memories of a blessed mother. I was lucky. I had a blessed mother as well who brought me up the right way. Jochebed was a generational slave, which means her husband was as well. She had no knowledge of any other life and had no way to better herself. She was a courageous and righteous woman, and this would have been her third child. When she saw him, she knew he was special, and her heart knew she must save him, and she must find a way. Her courage to protect him more than her own life gave her wisdom to trust God. She put all her trust in God and surrendered her son to him. Moses is found by Pharaoh's daughter. And let me tell you, this was no accident. God looked after this baby and then provided a way for his mother to nurse. And she even got paid, remember, for it? She had faith rewarded and now had a new job, nurse the child. She was even paid to look after him to raise her child for Pharaoh. So this is how Moses came to be. Both the Syrophoenician woman and Jochebed had one thing in common. Two, sorry. They were both mothers. And they both had faith and trust in God. Amen.